Well, Reno decides to disobey direct orders, and he doesn't move up the tongue, or down the tongue, toward the Yellowstone. Instead, he crosses the tongue, and he starts moving down the Indian Trail, following the trail, toward the Rosebud River. He follows it for a ways before finally turning around and moving north down the Rosebud before finally reaching the Yellowstone at the Rosebud-Yellowstone River confluence. So Reno has disobeyed direct orders and gone one valley over too far, to the left or to the west. When Reno gets to this point here, the Rosebud and Yellowstone River confluences, he runs into company. Now the company is in the form of Colonel John Gibbon and his Montana Army. Now Gibbon has been moving along the Yellowstone, he's been moving east, and he actually has been looking down Pryor Creek and Fry Creek, didn't find the Indians there. He continues east, and he looked down the Bighorn, and his scouts suggested or stated that they saw elements of Indians in this area. So re right now, Gibbon is of the opinion that they might be in this area down here, but he does not follow the Indian Trail. He continues east, and he ends up at this position, the Rosebud and Yellowstone River confluences, where he runs in the Reno. And Gibbon remains at this spot. Reno, following orders finally, decides to move east back along the Yellowstone. And he links up with the rest of the 7th Cavalry and General Terry, which are waiting at the Tongue River, Yellowstone River confluences. Now, when Terry finds out that Reno has disobeyed direct orders, he flies into a rage. He's completely upset with this, because if anybody, any Indians had seen his troops... The Indians could be fleeing as they speak. The big uh, fear that they had was that they would never be able to bring the Indians to bear. They would never be able to fight them or capture them because the Indians would spot them coming in, spot the armies, and scatter to the winds. So Reno disobeying orders could possibly have allowed his forces to be seen. The Indians could have gone back to the village, and the village could be scattering as they talk. Anyway, after the uh, conversation with Reno, the whole 7th Cavalry now reunited with Terry, moves west along the Yellowstone till they get to the Rosebud River and Yellowstone River confluences there, and that's where they link up with Colonel John Gibbon's army, who has been waiting for him. At that point, it's er late June 1876, and on June 21st, Colonel Gibbon, along with General Terry and General Custer, and Captain Grant Marsh, who is the uh, commander of the Far West steamboat, they board the, the Far West, and they have a council of war, and basically the conference is to figure out what they're going to do next. Now, they are here, and they know Reno has spotted a Indian trail going up the Rosebud River, going south up the Rosebud. While Gibbon was over here, his Indian scouts had seen possible Indians in the Bighorn area. So, based on all the information they have right now, they're here, and they know Indian activity has been happening here and here. So it looks like the Indians are probably in this area. Nothing has been spotted up here, nothing was spotted over here on Reno's scout, and they haven't heard from George Crook, so they're guessing that he's still down in this area. So at this point... They're trying to figure out what to do. And finally, General Terry, who is the overall commander, comes up with a plan. He decides to encircle this entire area, the western part of the unceded territory, and hopefully capture the Indians in between two forces, be able to bring them to bear, fight, or uh, actually capture the majority of them and bring them back to the reservation. Now, to do this, Terry has to divide the forces. And what he decides to do is... He's going to take his army, his, the, what guys that he has with him, minus the 7th Cavalry, and he's going to go with Colonel John Gibbon's army. What they're going to do is they're going to backtrack to the west, back along the Yellowstone, till they get to the Bighorn River. Once they get to that point, they're going to move south up the Bighorn. They're going to look at Tullock's Creek, the northern areas of it, and they're going to continue up till they get to the Bighorn River, Little Bighorn River confluence. At that point, they'll move down whichever river looks like the Indians might be on. Right now they're thinking the Little Bighorn. They'll probably come to this confluence and then start heading south up the Little Bighorn. Now the other force, which will just be the 7th Cavalry under General George Armstrong Custer, his force is going to move south up the Rosebud. 
and they're going to follow the trail that Reno found, and they're going to continue up, and based on what Terry wants them to do, Terry wants Custer to continue all the way up the Rosebud if he can, before swinging around to the Little, little Bighorn Headwaters, and then moving north down the Little Bighorn. If Custer can do that, he'll basically be spinning around and coming up this way. Terry and Gibbing will be coming coming down from the north, and they'll be coming this way. So hopefully they'll capture the Indians in this area. So that's basically what's going to happen here. So on June 22nd, General Custer departs from Terry and Gibbon. He begins his move south up the Rosebud. He goes back and forth across the river, the Rosebud here, looking for the Indians. He finds the Indian trail that Reno had found. He continues south up the Rosebud through the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th, and when he gets to this point here on June 24th, very late in the evening on June 24th, his scouts inform him that the Indian trail that they've been following, which has been getting fresher by the day, and larger by the day, is no longer moving south up the Rosebud. It has peeled off and is now heading west over the Wolf Mountain chain, which is right here, and it's theoretically heading toward the Little Bighorn River or Tullock's Creek. So at this point, on June 24th, Custer is here. He knows the Indian Trail has peeled off and it's going toward this area, the Little Bighorn. He knows Terry and Gibbon are up in this area coming down from the north. So at this point on June 24th, things look pretty good. Indians are here probably, Terry Gibbon up here, and Custer back here behind him. Now all Custer has to do is catch up to the Indians, the rear of the Indian line. So everything's looking good. It's looking like the Little Bighorn. So at that point, it's late June 24th, 1876, and we will continue on with the next segment, which will be some photographs of the officers of the 7th Cavalry and some of the civilians and other people that played prominent roles in the uh, Battle of the Little Bighorn, as well as a, a stone marker collection that I've been uh, basically amassing in the last year.